Ah, Napoleon. People can't get enough of this guy. The man, the myth, the legend. Actually, scratch that first part. Was Napoleon really even a man? You might think that's a crazy question, but it's taken for granted that Napoleon actually existed. But this very circumstance draws attention away from the credibility question. We're often likely to accept insufficient evidence and ignore flaws in the evidence when things go unquestioned. Flaws in supposedly uncontroversial ideas have been overlooked in the past, such as flaws in the idea that the Earth is flat. History books may tell us one thing, but increasing numbers of independent researchers are questioning whether Napoleon ever existed at all. Yeah, you heard me. Let that sink in. So what do the history books tell us about Napoleon? Well, time doesn't allow for me to get into the so-called miraculous military exploits of this average height for the time commander. There are dozens of other videos spreading the traditional propaganda found here on YouTube, but here's his bio in a nutshell. Napoleon Bonaparte was a French general and emperor during the early 19th century. While serving in the French army during the French Revolution, Napoleon ascended rapidly through the ranks. In 1804, he crowned himself emperor after seizing political power in France in a coup d'etat in 1799. Napoleon was ambitious, skilled, and a shrewd military strategist who waged war quickly and successfully against various coalitions of European nations and expanded his empire. This supposed Napoleon abdicated his throne, however, two years after the disastrous French invasion of Russia in 1812. After being exiled to the island of Elba, he managed to easily escape and regain control of France again, practically miraculously. During his Hundred Days campaign in 1815, he briefly regained power, and after being crushed at Waterloo, he was exiled to the remote island of St. Helena, where he died at age 51. Some say he was poisoned, others say it was stomach cancer, but no one on the planet has actually seen his body. So why are more and more researchers beginning to question the existence of the so-called most amazing military mind in all of French history? Well, let's take a look. A large majority of contemporaries who are convinced of Napoleon's existence have never actually seen him. Their convictions are based solely on hearsay. People who claim to have seen Napoleon at Portsmouth on board a ship that was to leave him at St. Helena can't be sure if they saw him. They only saw a person at a distance wearing a funny hat. Napoleon and his fantastic exploits are completely unbelievable. People who have said that they met him or said that they knew him said things like, well, if I hadn't witnessed it, I wouldn't have believed it myself. Well, then why should we believe them? Most stories of Napoleon's exploits originated completely in newspapers, which are notoriously unreliable. We read about retractions and corrections of past articles almost daily today. If it is hard to trust the news now, how much more over a couple hundred years ago would we distrust it? On top of that, the accounts didn't even come from eyewitnesses, but anonymous correspondence. Hmm, seems legit. Then there's the whole telephone game problem. The story about Napoleon's exploits that the anonymous correspondence transmitted had normally passed through a whole chain of people from the original eyewitnesses to another person, and then to another, and then to another, and then to another, and so on. An account, as told by one person, may be 90% correct, but if it has passed through a chain of 20 people, each time with a 90% probability just to be generous of being correct, then the probability of the last account being correct is less than one eighth. Well, I wouldn't bet on that, would you? Let's look back at the newspapers from those days. Compared to today, they weren't much different. They were just as much of a business back then as they are now. The goal of their reporting is to attract eyeballs not to report objective facts. What the papers told us about Napoleon are what we would today call clickbait. An epic story attracts readers and sells copies, especially when it can't be verified as we can with cameras today. Let's be real, the fact that the stories are true or false wouldn't matter all that much to newspaper reporters back then. And that's just the newspapers. Let's think about the governments. For the British government, Napoleon was a bogeyman for raising taxes, securing funds, and ramrodding its proposals through Parliament. Both Whigs and Tories had a vested interest in spreading the Napoleon legend during this period when different parties held their power. Finally, Napoleon's exploits are riddled with contradictions. According to some, Napoleon had a celebrated charge over the Bridge of Lodi in person, where others say the General Agaro did it. Well, it can't be both. Similarly, the French cavalry charge at Waterloo is described in contradictory ways. Various accounts even differ by four hours regarding the hour of battle. And paradoxically, both sides claim that Borodino was a victory. Depending on which version of the story you read, you get a different story every time. Worse still, different observers describe Napoleon's character in different ways. 
Some see him as a kind, gentle hero, while others see him as a cruel monster. He's liked by some because he is a military and political genius, while others think that he's a completely crazy person. Therefore, it seems much more likely that Napoleon represents a mythological composite of several actual individuals, such as many of the mythological heroes in Greek and Roman mythology. In fact, King Louis XVIII, the French king of 1819, was a Bourbon king and says he had ruled France for 23 years. Do the math! France and England have fought many battles during that period. The figure Napoleon probably is just a mythological composite of many French heroes from various conflicts between England and France in the past. So what does the physical evidence about Napoleon tell us? Well, as far as I'm aware, there is no physical evidence. There is only stories and testimonials. Testimonies about, hey, so-and-so saw this, or this is what happened. If the Napoleonic Wars are true, then it must be the single most important fact in the history of France. And for that fact, we have nothing but hearsay. So there you have it, folks. There probably was no Napoleon. It's vastly more reasonable to believe that Pedro was the class president than to believe an epic person like Napoleon ever ruled France. Think for yourselves. Spread the word. Share this video. Don't let history repeat itself. 